I think there's a tremendous correlation between sport and sport. If you want to categorize sport in the elite sense and then sport in the, um, uh, the fun, uh, juvenile, uh, youth sense where you're, you're, you're starting out, they, they intertwine. They're, they, they're all part of a, a life cycle, if you will. And um, when you're a young boy, I, I just got done doing something for my, my club where I'm, I'm reflecting back on what it was like to be in a club. And I remembered when I didn't have any shoes and I didn't have any spikes and I'm running in my bare feet and we're all out there as kids running in farmer's fields. Um, it was fun, it was sport, and it was, the, it was the seedlings, if you will, to a much higher level in terms of elite sport. So you have to start somewhere. So you, you, you come from a pool of, of, of sport to end up, hopefully, at the end, in, in, in an elite sport. Um, and then I think um, the elite sport person has the obligation to reflect back and to give back. And so that's where they all come together and there is, they do create a life cycle. If it's done right and it's done with a sense of balance and it's done with a sense of integration, I think that they, they are thoroughly connected together. To be an Olympian, is, it, it puts you into a, a, a collective group of people um, in terms of elite, elite athletic ability. Um, when, when, you, when you get there, so to, so to get there is a tremendous accomplishment. And when you, when you are there, you do have a certain, it's probably the first time where you have a certain um, feeling of national representation. Every country is represented. So when you're there, you're representing your, your vest. And for, for me, it was an Irish green vest. And um, not only that, but you represent yourself. Uh, as an athlete and it's, it's probably the highest platform that you're going to get to perform on so when you're there you want to do your best you know the whole world is looking and it's probably the one time where everything stops and and particularly for track and field uh, you may get all four years where people are not watching track and field that much and then you come to the Olympics and everybody is watching so you screw it up there you're kind of screwing it up again you know for everybody that's watching it but you definitely have a certain national representation for sure and you feel it more than probably any other time um, uh, other than a world championship, but at that, at that, because you're representing shoe companies, you're representing endorsements, you're representing a lot of other things. But in that particular time, I think nationalism is the one time where you do feel the representation. I, 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 I feel anyway. You know, mo motivation. When you talk about motivation, you talk about um, over the span of a career, from when you were a young boy starting off as a youth. Um, you're, you're motivated by different things. It's very easy to be motivated on the way up because you, you want to arrive at the top. So you, 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 you push hard and you've got a lot of things to, to be motivated uh, by. Um, but when you're at the top, it's so much harder because you really have nothing ever to gain and you have everything to lose. And it sparked something in me that I went back up to my diaries and I started to count all the sub four minute miles that I had done. And I had arrived in at about maybe 60. So I had about 60 sub four minute miles. And I, I was going through a bit of a funk at the time where I wasn't as motivated. And all of a sudden I started to think to myself, what if I could run a hundred of them? And lo and behold, it, at that point, it took me to another five or six years where I eventually, five years later, I arrived at 100 sub four minute miles. And that was probably one of the most creative, motivational things that I had ever done because the other stuff was all easy. This stuff was a little bit more challenging, but it, it, it does represent um, how hard it is to be motivated, but it also represents how easy it is to be creative and, and create some motivation for yourself. You know what, when you talk about seriousness of sport, um, is, it, is it treated seriously? Uh, sometimes I think it is for sure, absolutely, and, and I think it depends on what um, socio-economic part of the world that you come from. Um, I, I definitely think in, in the U.S. It's, it's, it's treated very seriously, and you, and you can start seeing it from the grassroots level up. Uh, sometimes I think it's treated more seriously, not to overstep my bounds here, but treated more seriously from a parental standpoint than it is from the juvenile standpoint. They're trying to have some fun. I think the par parents are starting from a very young age to instill this importance of it. Um, and even to this day, I, do, I, I go out of my way not to be at all my son's and daughter's events because I want him to enjoy it as a kid. I want him to be enjoying the sport as a kid.
and I think it's very, very important and crucial to give kids a, an underlying fundamental um, um, start off, if you will, or a, or a starting point to enjoy what they're doing. Um, I remember a story where somebody made a call to me and it was an advertising, an Irish advertising agency and wanted to know if I would do a billboard for Guinness. You know, so when you're coming in off planes, you're, you're, you're there drinking a pint of Guinness and you're, you're, you're a sports person. And um, I remember thinking, um, uh, you know, I remember telling him I don't even like Guinness. And so, uh, it, you know, I think the lady on the, on the, um, on the uh, phone said, it, it doesn't matter if you like Guinness or not, we can work around it. And so anyway, I remember um, saying, give me 24 hours to think about it. And as I hung up the phone, I started to reflect that, you know what? There are athletes that do it. It looks glamorous. But there are kids out there that take heed in what athletes are doing. And so it, it, that was probably the first time I really started to try and um, um, it, it registered with me that you do have social influence and you do have a social responsibility. And consequently, I called back the next day and, and, and declined. My, my, my coaching experience was just purely by luck. Um, uh, I, all my background is finance. I, I, I studied hard when I was in the off seasons. Um, I always took the time to um, nurture other aspects of me as a person. So in the off seasons, particularly in the fall, um, I ended up doing my master's program, my, my certified public accounting exams. My, I was in the middle of my CFA. Wall Street was where I wanted to be. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm very thankful to what Villanova has done for me as a university. Coming here as a student from Ireland, um, graduating, making an Olympic team, going on and running for um, uh, the best part of 15 years, um, allowed me at that point to kind of reflect back and say, you know what, this is an opportunity for me to give back. And, and it's like, you know, I always say it's like coming out of a restaurant, enjoying a big meal, and then somebody tapping you on the uh, shoulder and say, and the check is... <laughs> You have to come back and, and coach. And it just happened to be a coaching position that was there at the time. I had no plans on doing it. It wasn't my dream job, I'll be honest. Uh, but as it turns out, I think I'm in a dream job. What I would like to be remembered for, I think, changes from decade to decade. I think when you're an elite athlete, you want to be remembered as an athlete. Um, but, but I think it's evolved into something far more deeper for me as time has gone on. And, and I think, and I've, I've thought about this, um, and this is not something that I'm just shooting off the cuff. Um, I, I really want to be remembered for my contribution to education and the technical side of, of coaching. Um, I work hard uh, to present, um, um, uh, you know, a coaching evidence of, of what, in my experiences over a, a long career and my experiences as a coach, what things work, what things don't work, um, the various ways that you can approach different things. And, and I, I try to give back a lot through education. Um, and so if anything, when, I, when I'm done my coaching and when I'm done everything, um, I would hope to think that what I got from, from my coaching experience and, and my running experience was an opportunity to be able to give back to other coaches.